Hey, how you doing? Anthony Ferro here at Crate Sci-Fi. Today we're going to be building more uh, spaceship stuff. Um, so uh, last week, uh, I'll link to the video, I did like uh, a fighter pilot, like a chair, right? For like green screen, if they're just like in a, in a, like a fighter, like a single uh, piloted craft. So now I also have a scene where it's uh, two people. So I need to have some kind of console, something where they're buttons and they can do things and exchange stuff. So I went to my local uh, Goodwill and I got a bunch of junk from the uh, electronics department. And what you're looking for is a little bit of money, like $2, $5, but you're looking for like shapes, right? So I have this air purifier, which is gonna be sort of like the core piece um, that I'm gonna build around. And that's because this is just a really weird looking shape. It doesn't look like anything, right? Like you can't use like one of those sort of tower things. It'll read as something and it has buttons. Buttons are good. And then there was like this cheap stereo that I just sort of took apart, but I got this because it has knobs, right? Right? So I'll utilize all these knobs and then I got like um, the top of it, you know, it's a little compartment and this is for the show that I'm working on now, the new show I'm working on, Zenith Run, right? So all of these you'll be able to see in a, in a practical uh, production. Um, this is from the, the video game controller that I used for the other thing, you know, so um, again, it's just all about finding unique shapes, profiles, silhouettes, because these are not hero pieces, they're just set pieces. So um, these are gonna be pretty cool. All right, so um, the one thing is this was a stereo, this thing weighed like 50 pounds. I gutted everything off camera. I, you know, that, that right, let's not gloss over that. That, you know, that took me like half a day and it was, you're pulling things apart, it's dirty work, <laughs> whatever. But now that's all done. So I have this piece, that piece knobs you got to give actors knobs right so um let's put this together and uh make a little console for our our spaceship all right so let's just take a look again at what we're working with i got this stereo piece with this nifty dial i want to make sure to keep the dial and uh this is this air purifier i just like that it's an odd shape i like that curve to it so one of the bits in this um show uh zenith run is there's this drive that has to go into the console so that's the one practical thing that I have to make sure works. Usually I'm just making things for decoration, but this actually has a purpose. So um, I'm repositioning this um, CD cover, flipping it around, and uh, just cutting out the inside with, with my Dremel tool just to make sure that it fits. Now, you, you know, people are going to be putting their hands in there, so I just clean up the edges first with a file. Um, you know, you want to just make it safe. And then I'm taking my Dremel tool with the sanding drum and I'm just rounding off all the corners. Just want it all to be rounded, all to be nice to play with. Because when people are acting, um, you know, their minds are other places. So you, you want to have a safe environment for them. Here I'm just putting the knobs in, uh, in, in that mug because I know I'll lose them. <laughs> And just, you know, when doing, as I always say, square peg, round hole, super glue and the super glue kicker, which is the accelerator that makes it dry right away, right there, bang, I'm just hitting that. This is really your friend in these kind of builds because you can just keep the train moving. So here I just have a few um, things that I want to save on this, uh, this piece, like this dial. So I mask that off. Um, so that when I paint it later, uh, I'll still have that little needle moving. So here, round peg, square hole, you know, we have to um, fill in the gaps, right? So this diamond pattern is gonna match the chairs. And this is EVA foam. And I'm just cutting strips to start filling these gaps. And you know, there's no plan. It's just an aesthetic thing. As we go, you look and you say, okay, that needs to be adjusted and there so the top of that is done and it's done by that process just one step at a time okay it needs this oh this will help this and you're just bonding everything together nothing's hard and fast um don't get too distracted with trying to make things perfect right we're just making a set piece you want it to be good, of course, but you know, uh, keep things moving. So here, uh, this is going to be the top of the console. So I just have this piece of foam 
and this is going to take the the piece that I found and it's going to give it a base that I'm going to be able to include into something else right so everything fits snugly now again I'm taking uh, the super glue and using the kicker and I'm just gonna put a seam I tend to overbuild just because once people start handling these things you never want it to be delicate right you want to keep in mind when you're building these things worst case scenario people are gonna be you know you're like oh this looks good but just be ginger with it that's not gonna happen they're gonna they're gonna really manhandle these things so now I have to cut a recession so that um, the prop that gets put into that compartment has enough room so this is just scrap foam because you're never going to see this just make it a, a foam box basically <laughs> and again hot glue um that i wanted to be hot glue because who knows they could maybe put their hand in there too forcefully and punch through so the hot glue will really um hold that together and you know that's not pretty but it's sturdy so test fitting yeah the handle go in there and um, now we're gonna go ahead and sort of bring everything together. So I have this as the core, as the base piece. This is that um, air purifier. And what I wanna do is just take some uh, EVA foam, the floor mat foam, and I'm gonna use this to extend out the piece to change the profile and allow it to seat that uh, top console that we just made, right? So, um, off camera I nipped the top of my finger here so be careful you know keep uh, keep to keep mindful of, of that you're using a razor knife right okay so now I have that diamond shaped pattern that's going to go on the side and again always test fitting that looks good and here I realized that you know my top piece I cut it probably a little too short but uh, we'll fix that later. But, you know, just transparency. I, I want you guys to know that that happens, you know. So now I'm just toothing this up, right? This is a really rough grit sandpaper. And that's going to give the glue something to really dig into. So I'm using hot glue on this because this is a very wide surface area. So I put, a, you know, this is almost one stick of hot glue. And I'm going to use that to secure to the side of that air purifier unit. So you seat that in there. And that, you know, by its own weight is gonna give you a really nice bond. But what I'm gonna do um, is I'm also gonna add screws to this. So these screws, I have these little plastic washers and it does two things. It gives it um, a new detail, you know, it gives it an industrial or fabricated look and it's just helping to keep everything together. Now in other parts of this where it's, like here, it's actually keeping it together. But I'll also add screws where they're not necessary just for the aesthetics. And there you see, it just gives it that industrial fabricated, you know, this is a machine look. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue the top piece on here. And um, again, you know, this is not a perfect fit, but it's foam, it's forgiving. Uh, again, putting these screws for aesthetics and to help keep everything together. So there we have the hot glue and the screw, so that's not going anywhere. And then in the back, you know, it's just going to be hot glue. So you gotta make sure that these things really stick together well because in the back there, it's structural. And you'll see the gap is not great there. So what I'm gonna do here is take some scrap foam that I have laying around. I think this is like three millimeter, four millimeter. And I'm just going to uh, make a patch basically. So um, to hide the crimes, this patch, I'm going to, dis I'm going to disguise it as some sort of um, right, some sort of fabricated piece. So with the Dremel, I make these fake rivets and we're gonna glue this on the side. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna add dimensions, it's gonna add visual interest, and it's going to hide our mismeasured um, sides there. And, you know, and I'm glad I did that because it just adds a nice little element. So now it's all coming together and now I just got to seal in the back. So I have a, you know, always try to use the scrap pieces of foam first. And then if I don't have a piece that's the right size, then I'll, I'll cut a new piece. So here, you know, we're basically, we're building a box, you know, so I just don't want to have that just plain, um, 
piece of foam in the back there, you want to do something to just give it a little bit of life. So um, I'm going to square this up, make sure that that's all tucked away, that's all good, that's not going anywhere. And I'm, I'm adding an extra bead of glue here. Uh, again, because this stuff's going to be handled, so I want to overbuild. And here, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is just a piece of foam that has a different texture, has the diamond texture, which is a different texture of what that piece is. And just all I'm doing is uh, taking a smaller square and hot gluing it on there. And, you know, it'll really come to life when we paint it because it'll reflect light differently. So here, as I mentioned, these screws are doing nothing at all. They're just aesthetic at this point. And now sanding, <laughs> you can never escape sanding. So the plastic pieces I have to sand to accept the, the primer. And then the, the foam pieces, we have to hit them with the EVA uh, foam primer and that would be Plastidip. So Plastidip is what's going to seal that all together. So here it is uh, in the yard, uh, I have a primer Primer coat on everything and now I'm going to do uh, just a very light brushing of silver that's going to give it that metallic look right so what I do is just put a little bit of a amount on the brush of paint get that really dry and just lightly kiss the surface and you see there uh, it really shows up on the top there just gives it a really nice brushed metal look I mean that yeah that looks really good so here I have the rub and buff. This is the uh, metallic silver. It's like a wax. You put that on your finger. And I just want to hit some high points, some buttons, um, you know, just to, to give it more of that worn in. This has been a metallic piece uh, on this craft for a while. And there the light really shows it off. So now off camera, you're always tweaking things, right? So here uh, I'm putting on the knobs, putting it back together. You know, I see there like I missed a little bit under the knob and you know, I'll have to deal with that. Um, peel off the tape, there's a little bit of white. So, you know, I'm just gonna build on top of that. And what I decided to do was, it was a little too flat. So I was like, oh, let me just, sometimes I take these dollar store nail polishes when I just need to add a bit of color. And um, I sort of did it in the moment and I thought, all right, well, let me just redo this one button on camera so you can see what I'm talking about. And what's nice about the nail polish for this kind of stuff is it's meant to paint nails, right? So it's, it's really thick in the brush so it's easier to paint little things like that. And it just breaks up all that silver. So here, uh, finally, we're just going to do a wash over the whole thing. Um, I use the burnt umber and the black. Just really, really dilute this with a lot of water. Uh, just slather it everywhere and this is going to give it that final unification and that final just dusting that just makes it sort of blend into the background and what I do is I just really heavily cover that and then we wipe off the excess with a uh, paper towel and yeah now that looks like a set piece and I just finally put a clear coat on there just to sort of seal in everything and there's the final piece and let's take a look at it on set. And there it is with the actors. This to me is the best part. This is when it really comes to life. Really happy with that. <laughs> and we're live on set, right? So here it is, right? So hopefully that um, makes things accessible to you, right? Went to the Goodwill store, spent about eight bucks, was in the garage built this and here we are right now this um spaceship set these these chairs are not the same ones that i built in the other video but it's the same exact principles same techniques uh, i'll link to that if you haven't seen that yet so it's basically these chairs we're in a green environment and then this and right so yeah you know we made it out of a stereo and a air filter but Hopefully this shows you now, because I always um, focus on the pieces as we build them, but this is just part of a thing, right? You're looking at me, you're looking at the actor, they're talking and stuff, and their hands are doing this. This is not a focal point, but it's the right shape, it's the right colors, it has the knobs, and you know, it costs our time, but probably like $12 in materials, right? So, um, yeah, so we shot uh, part of Zenith Run today. We still got some more to shoot, so we'll do some more uh, videos on that process. And then um, soon you'll be able to see the series.
Well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. I love to read the comments. And be sure to check out our merch shop. We got these hats, we got t-shirts. Um, when you purchase those, that really helps support this channel. All right, um, like I said, more uh, videos about this series and pretty soon Zenith Run, the series will be on the channel. <laughs> so remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> ooh,